A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to Na the French equation. And this is going to be a real fun one. The starting approach is pretty magnificent, at least in my opinion. And you should give it a try for yourself. Post your solution down there in the comments below once you're done. And when you're done, keep watching the video for Le Solution. Other than that, this channel still exists due to people supporting me on Patreon. So if you want to keep the videos coming, then definitely make sure to support the channel on Patreon too. Even the smallest of donations helps. So check it out, patreon.com slash mathable down there in the description below. And now we are going to dive right in. So how would you go about the differential equation like this in a normal case? Just suppose we have x instead of y here. What you would do in normal cases, you would divide both sides by y prime, and then you would basically formally integrate both sides with respect to x. But the thing right here is, if we were to just simply integrate both sides with respect to x, we don't know what the antiderivative of y is going to yield. So this approach really doesn't work out this time around, so we need to get a little bit more creative. And this is where I said at the start of the video that the starting approach is a pretty magnificent one. I really like it. And what we are going to do is we are going to introduce a little substitution, which is going to lead to some casework. We are going to say that y prime is equal to a new function, but this time with respect to y. So we are going to say let t of y of x be equal to y prime. Now, if we just plug everything that we have into here, what are we going to get? We are going to get that y times, and y prime is t, is equal to, so what do we have here? y double prime is the same as y prime differentiated with respect to x once again, giving us the second derivative overall. So this right here is the same as differentiating t of y with respect to x. Now, I'm writing this in Leibniz notation here because this makes things a tiny little bit easier. Please note that t of y is a function which is implicitly with respect to x in some kind of way. So if we were to differentiate t of y with respect to x, we're going to end up with the chain rule, meaning we are going to take the outer derivative dt dy, and then we are going to take the inner derivative, namely, we are going to differentiate y with respect to x. And y with respect to x differentiated is nothing other than y prime, which is the same as t, meaning we are going to arrive at this form now, namely we have y times t, is equal to, um, and this right here is dt dy times t. And this right here is our differential equation written in a kind of different form. But this makes our life actually easier because you are going to notice now that we have the function of t on both terms. So if we were to bring one of those terms to the other side, we are going to arrive at y times t minus dt dy times t is equal to zero. By factoring out t, we are going to arrive at y minus the differential of t in y times t is equal to zero. And now we have a multiplication of things. This operator, thankfully, doesn't apply to our t out here. It's already applied to single t here. So it doesn't lead to some weird quantum mechanical <laughs> shit. So th this makes our life way, way easier. So when is the product of two things equal to zero? Either if this part in the parentheses is, is equal to zero. So this is one of the cases. Namely y minus dt dy is equal to zero. Or if t is equal to zero. But you know what t is? t is nothing other than y prime. So this part right here, that's the equivalence only exclusively for this part, y prime is equal to zero. So when is the derivative of the function equal to zero? Well, when our function in and of itself is a constant. Meaning from the second case that we have right here, we can conclude that y must be constant in some kind of way, where the constant is element of the complex numbers. So this is one way this differential equation could work out. And you can easily see this. If you plug it in, then y prime, this right here is zero, y double prime obviously is also going to be zero, meaning the differential equation holds. So the last thing that we need to solve is y minus dt divided by dy is equal to zero. And this is where the less part already begins, and this is also the fun part, 
of the differential equation. I'm going to rewrite the title a little bit more. I'm going to bring the dt divided by the y to the other side. It's not, it's not divided by the y, but you know what I mean. So y is equal to dt dy. And now, what we are going to do is we are simply going to integrate both sides with respect to y. So we are going to get the integral of y dy is equal to dt dy, but the integral of that integrate with respect to y. Now what you're going to notice is that dy and dy is going to cancel out in layman's terms. So this right here is just a formal um, substitution. Basically, you can get rid of it, meaning you're going to integrate just t, which is going to yield t plus some arbitrary constant c, but we don't care about that. And this is the same as y prime, obviously. And if we integrate y with respect to y, this part right here is going to just yield y squared plus some arbitrary constant c. I'm going to give it a name c now. Um, this constant absorbed the constant from the other side, by the way. Now what we ended up with basically is now another differential equation, namely that y prime is equal to y squared plus c. And now we can just go ahead and divide both sides by y squared plus c. This is separation of variables. And then we can integrate both sides, namely y prime, which is the same as I'm going to write it as dy dx, divided by y squared plus c. Um, y squared over 2. I'm terribly sorry. How did I forget that? That was y squared over 2, obviously. <laughs> I forgot how to integrate polynomials. I'm being stupid here. It's equal to 1. And now if we integrate both sides with respect to x. What we are going to arrive at is the 1 over dx. And dx is once again going to cancel out. It's just a form of substitution. If we integrate 1, this is going to yield um, x plus some arbitrary constant. I'm going to call it kappa. And what we now have left is dy. Um, I'm going to write it out. This right here is the integral of dy divided by y squared over 2 plus some arbitrary constant c is equal to x plus kappa. And now we are just going to manipulate this part right here a little bit. And this is going to lead to a familiar integral. We have used it time and time again here on this channel. I'm not going to go into any more detail about that. We are going to factor out the one half here. Factoring out the one half gives us a two on our c. And one divided by one half is going to give us a factor of two. We can drag it to the front using the linearity of the integral, giving us what we have right here. And now we are going to just play a tiny little trick on this constant part right here. We are going to take the square root of this two times c, and then we are going to square it up once again, giving us two c yet again. So we are not going to change anything about that. But this integral that we have right here is nothing other than the inverse tangent scaled with a factor of square root of 2c. Y you can watch my videos on that link down there in the description somewhere. <laughs> Meaning this part right here is going to yield 1 divided by the square root of 2c times the inverse tangent of y with respect to x divided by the square root of 2c. And that's what we got now. Now you're going to notice we have 2 divided by square root of 2 times square root of c. We can expand. I'm going to um, split it up a tiny little bit. We are going to expand this fraction right here. We are going to rationalize it a tiny little bit by square root of 2 over square root of 2, giving us overall um, that this part right here is the square root of 2 divided by 2 times the square root of c. 2 and 2 is going to cancel out, giving us square root of 2 over square root of c. So let me write this out a little bit. So x plus kappa is the same as um, square root of 2 divided by the square root of c or the square root of 2 divided by c, obviously times the inverse tangent of y with respect to x divided by square root of 2c. And last thing we are going to do now is we are going to solve for y with respect to x and then we are already done. So we are going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that. It's, um, yeah, that's that's just possible. C is element of the real numbers. It's, it's non-zero, obviously, otherwise all of this wouldn't work out. So we are going to arrive at uh, inverse tangent of y divided by the square root of 2c is equal to um, the square root of c divided by the square root of 2 times x plus kappa. Now we are going to take the tangent and multiply both sides by the square root of 2c, giving us overall a final answer of y with respect to x is either 
a constant out of the real or complex numbers, or it's of the form square root of 2c times the tangent of, and now we have everything here. So square root of c divided by square root of 2 times x plus kappa. And that's it. This right here is our pretty nice solution to this kind of innocent looking uh, differential equation. I, if you just see something like this, you wouldn't think about getting a tangent out on the other side. Actually, I, was, uh, I would actually think about exponentials or something because we have our function being preserved in some kind of way when differentiating. But this is the beauty of differentials and integration. Namely, you never know what the fuck you are going to get. And if you like what you have seen today, if you want to see more maths content, then definitely make sure to check out the contents of today's sponsor, Bray, and who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Differential equations are fun. Differentiating and integrating is fun. Do you know what's also fun? The courses over on Brilliant. With the nearly 70 interactive courses and all topics STEM, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer scientists, chemistry. No matter what it is you are looking for to learn in the STEM field today, Brilliant definitely got something in stock for you that you can use to learn something new on a daily basis. And also when you're on the go, for example, they also got an app and not only their website where you can play around with visuals and interactive content which are going to improve your knowledge in STEM by a big margin in no time at all. And as mentioned before, the best part about Brain is their interactive learning experience. And it usually goes like this. You go over to a course of your choice, for example, calculus. You will lead over to differential equations eventually. Over there, they're going to start off with simple concepts like continuity and also what a function is and the like. And you are not going to be bombarded with a lot of abstract stuff, a lot of abstract definitions. No, what they do is they take a completely different approach to mathematics. Namely, they show you, for example, what epsilon delta means in a graphical fashion. How functions approach other values and the like interactively. You can learn so much by not doing the actual mathematics, but by just interpreting what a function is going to do under transformation and the like. It's absolutely amazing and their learning concept is absolutely unique and I totally invite you to try it out today. I can't explain in words how useful it is to most students to use Brilliant on a regular basis. And it can be useful for you too, I'm pretty certain about that. And if you don't trust me, why not try out my link at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash emblemass or the QR code somewhere up here. With it, you are going to get a 30-day free trial of awesomeness. Try the whole landscape of Brilliant for completely free for 30 days. And if you think like this could benefit you for a longer period of time, then why not make sure to totally make use of the link and get 20% of an annual premium subscription, at least the first 200 people to use the link. So be quick before the link runs out. And I'm pretty certain that it's going to enhance your knowledge in no time at all. It doesn't matter in which part of the STEM field you want to learn something new on a regular and daily basis in a very fun and intuitive way. So check it out and support the channel this way. And I thank you guys for watching and as mentioned before, support the channel too on Patreon. And I really like this one. There was a fun differential equation. Have a good one. See ya.